Review. There we go. Oh, dude, how are you? Uh, good, good. That's cool. How's everybody doing over there? Uh, good. I mean, actually, everyone's in. Uh, everyone's in New York. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so actually, the last time we actually seen you was like 2007, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, crazy. Uh, what was it about Dylan Dog that actually brought you back to the tree? I uh, the uh, Dylan Dog was just it was just a compelling script. It was one of those things. I read it. Um, uh, ten pages in, I realized that it was a Dylan Dog script because it was titled Dead of Night at the time. Um, and then when I finished it, I was like, it was about five minutes, and I just called up producers and I said, just what glass do I have to crawl over to uh, to do this? And I went in and I pitched my guts out like two weeks later and danced around the room and found someone crazy enough to say yes, and here we are. So when it comes to the look of the film, uh, how did you come about, I mean, because it's a comic book. Yeah. So how did you come into, I guess, into a collaboration with how it's going to look on screen? Um, I had a really talented DP called Jeff Hall, who's this Australian guy who's done, um, he's done a few things, but a lot of Australian films, and he just had, he framed things the same way that I like to shoot them. It's, it just, it's really, I just, I'm really a fan of just comic book framing in terms of, and just, and that just comes from CGI, which is just, or just working in animation, which is just a lot of depth of field and just really, like, you know, low horizons, and really I wanted to make something that just felt, um, that just felt a little surreal and, and stylized. I just wanted it to be something that was as hopefully as fun as the content that it was being shot. Yeah. Now, Dylan Dog is actually a European comic and it's set in London, I think. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come about? I guess did you want to take it away from Europe and bring it to the states? Is that no, actually, um, I think it was that was a producer decision because whenever I got the script, it was set in New York actually, and I thought that felt a little weird. That felt definitively like it was like it was it was sort of going too far away from what the, the source material was. And then New Orleans came up and all of a sudden, you know, Brownstone Mansion, or Brownstone Apartment turned into, you know, Plantation Mansion, all of a sudden, you know, a subway system turned into streetcars and stuff like that. Like it just, it just all of a sudden, the, the richness of it just popped out. So it just seemed like it was a natural place that Dylan would go to and, and uh, after leaving London, so. And pretty much cast it like the perfect odd couple, I guess you can say, uh, <laughs> Brandon and uh, yeah. Sam? Yeah. Uh, how did that go about? Uh, Brandon was already attached whenever I signed on. Um, there was a stack of tapes of people who had auditioned for Marcus, and um, I went through them all, and Sam just jumps out, like, right away. And um, But I went to Brandon, and I was like, it's just too bad that you guys are in Superman together, because I'm sure that's going to be weird. And he was like, are you kidding me? It's like, we're best friends. And I was like, I didn't know you were best friends. That's okay. So, uh, so we invited him to one of our lunches, and and, uh, and we just started talking about the movie. And as soon as he sat down, I knew that they were just, I mean, they just come off as best friends. I mean, you sit in a room with them, and they just they just play off of each other, and they bring out something in the other that isn't there whenever they're not, which is really great. So, And that totally comes through on screen. So, so what I like about Dylan Dog, it, it kind of mixes up all these different, uh, you know, zombies, werewolves, vampires. Yeah. What do you think it is about that mixture that kind of excites audiences? Um, I think, I think that the movie audience is is so smart now, I think, in terms of genre stuff like this, that I think you can then go to sort of that next level. I don't think an audience is as thrilled necessarily about, hey, here's a story about a werewolf or a vampire. Here's how cool they transform. Here's how their life has changed because of it. I think everybody wants the next step. And now I think, or they're more accepting of it, I think now. And so um, I think it's like you now you can deal with superheroes who are fallen superheroes. I think you can deal with monsters that have to live in society and this is how they live in society. I think we just wanted to cut to the, the how a little bit more and I think that's the thing that, that just makes it a lot more fun for that kind of an audience. So I also noticed that you, uh, you use, um, it's a kind of throwback to like old yeah. makeup instead yeah. of using uh, CGI and totally. graphics for the monsters. Um, how did that come about? Uh, that came about because um, I just love that. I just, I just, I, I can't get enough of like American Werewolf and Lost Boys and just uh, Pumpkinhead. Uh, all these things are just like it's just they're just a blast. And to me, it's so real and it's just so much more tangible. And so when this came along, it just seemed like even if we had more money, I would just put more guys in, in suits. It was just uh, and there's just something about somebody walking on set who looks like a monster. That just it just changes the tone completely. So uh, so much better than CG, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you. All right, thanks, dude.